Hello and welcome to Conversations with Dr. Westman. Today we're going to be talking about is food quality important? This is a hotly debated topic. Let's drill down to the facts and learn what there is to know. We also have a special bonus for you today brought to you by Dr. Westman. It's his new guide, 10 Tips for Starting Keto the Right Way. We'll tell you a little bit more about this later on in the episode, and we'll also put a link for you in the description. So let's get started. Eric, you often hear folks advocate for things like organic, or grass-fed, or pasture-raised, and so on, and so many other terms. What are your thoughts on all of this? Well, I think um, there's a phenomenon that's happened that um, gets mixed up with the uh, idea of having humane sorts of ways to raise animals and, and even uh, ways to help with climate change. And it, it gets mixed up with a, a better health sort of messaging. So, so I, you know, I learned about low carb diets in the year about 2000, uh, 1998 more specifically. And I started using a version of a low carb diet that really didn't pay too much attention to food quality. I mean, there was no real grass-fed beef. There wasn't much organic available. And, 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 and the diet I started using worked just fine. In fact, I uh, use low-carb diets now in clinical practice and in research for over 20 years here in Durham, North Carolina. And I've learned from people that there are many different ways to do it. You can eat clean eating with organic and free range and, and uh, grass fed beef and go to the farmer's market. And, and that's fantastic, but, but you don't have to do that. So it's not, it's not essential to do, to get results with a low carb diet. All you really need to do is keep the carbs super low. Um, so I think it's great if you can, uh, it, it's going to help change the food environment. If you can eat organic and have, uh, farmer's market food or, or even, you know, purchase a half a cow or the neighbor locally, but it's not necessary. And, and the, the, fo the downside of, of the focus on healthy, clean eating as a required part of keto means that it uh, takes away access uh, from a lot of people because they don't have the mon money to purchase those kinds of foods. So um, that brings me to my next point, because you advise some of your patients, some of whom may not be in the best financial position, to not focus at all on organic grass-fed and any of this. And in fact, I've even heard you advocate that um, you can you can do this diet, you know, just fine by ordering McDonald's or ordering some other fast food um, um, options. But the the key, obviously, is not just any old McDonald's or any old fast food. You have to be very particular. You want to just speak about that, maybe. Yeah, sure. So I, um, on purpose, I created a clinical practice after doing clinical research and publishing the papers. On, on purpose, I set myself in a clinic that takes insurance and takes Medicare and Medicaid so that I could understand, um, uh, uh, as opposed to like setting up a concierge practice where only the uber rich people can come see me. There, there are some doctors that do that, and I think that's fantastic. But, but my goal was to learn how to implement low carb diets in, a, in the world that people live in right now. And, and so this yeah, one gentleman came back to me losing 10 pounds a month. And, and I asked people what to, they're eating on a simple sheet of paper, right? Please write down. And he basically said the dollar menu at McDonald's on a sheet of paper. And I, I I can't remember the last time I ate at McDonald's, but um, it does, it's not about me, right? <laughs> so he heard what I said, heard my class and the list of foods and, and figured out that he could eat two to three double cheeseburgers off the dollar menu at McDonald's without the bun, with no fries, and with no sugar in the drinks. He would get diet soda. So, um, and, you know, while it might sound terrible, of all of the things we medical obesity people do, we give people pills. We give people, sell people products and, and we, not me, but medical weight loss researchers. And even some medical weight loss people will do an operation on your stomach so that it's this big and take out half your stomach. So as far as all the different ways of going about things, 
having the, the low carb food at a fast food restaurant is a relatively healthy way to go about things so that there's not gonna be any large problem with doing it. And actually the fast food and, the, and restaurant industries can be part of the solution if they understood that all you had to do is cut carbs out. And in our area that you can get lettuce wraps or you can just tell people don't give me the bun although they don't always do that. Um, but when you think about it, a business that sells food isn't gonna to wanna to have you eat less food, right? They're gonna want you to eat more food, not, not less food. And what happened to this gentleman who ate off the dollar menu at McDonald's is he started eating less. He didn't need as much because he was starting to burn his own body fat. He was starting to burn the energy that he'd already stored up by eating the, the bun at McDonald's and the fries. So it's like, you know, he's finally using all of the food that he had purchased through the years, if you look at it in that way. Uh, but uh, so that, yeah, you pause on the whole clean eating. Uh, if the if you can't afford it uh, or, or don't like those kinds of foods or, or the idea uh, of it, it's not necessary, but it's probably helpful uh, in the, the social change. I, you know, so I'm the holdout, one of the holdouts who say, show me a paper about grass-fed beef improving human health over just regular beef. Those really don't exist. So the studies show that the, the food is different. The composition of the food is different, but you can't find studies of giving this food to people showing a benefit beyond. So let's say a great study would be give you know, McDonald's beef versus grass-fed beef to two groups of people, follow them over time and see if there's any benefit between the two. Those studies haven't been done. And, you know, I'm, I'm a scientist. I'm a clinical researcher. I, I can't recommend something like a, you know, with the strength of a prescription until that level of evidence for like a prescription drug has been uh, amassed or, or put together. Um, so, you know, I, I watched the... Um, world kind of put clean eating keto, low carb keto, and then there's the macro calculation that came from the seizure disorder world. This is actually, a, there's a keto diet for epilepsy that's been around a long time. And I don't use any of those other things. Uh, the, I started hearing my patients start talking about all these other things. And I can't afford all of the keto you know, organic products. I'm like, what, who says you have to do that? <laughs> so, so our, um, at Adapt Your Life and Adapt Your Life Academy, our position is to just remind people that those are all nice if you can sorts of things. But the most important thing is to keep the carbs really low so you can burn your own body fat or the fat that you eat. Eric, in your book, End Your Carb Confusion, there is an analogy of a sound modulator. Um, can you explain this analogy, but in particular reference to today's topic? Yeah, so um, Amy Berger and the ADAPT team helped me put together Andrew Carp Confusion. I, I tell my patients that's why it's so easy to read, is that I didn't write all of it. <laughs> so we had professional writers and a, a team working on it. Um, the sound modulator basically is like a, an amplifier with different knobs on it and, and different controlling different things. The most important thing to start out with is controlling the carbs. So in this uh, talk about clean eating and, and organic or grass-fed beef or, uh, you know, um, Kerrygold butter is another thing you'll hear kind of as a phrase out there. Um, that's less important. So that's like the, the fine tuning uh, knob over here where the most important thing is to keep the carbs really low. And, and that's been our role is to remind people that's where this all started with carb restriction, keeping carbs down. And then these other things have been put into the whole field without the clarity of where things came from. Uh, and yeah, so it's the, the other, you know, other important things are exercise, staying active, uh, really important stress management. Uh, and we get into that and, and your carb confusion in the book. But the first thing to really grapple with is keeping the sugar and starch, the carbs really low. Fantastic. And just to recap before we go, um, you are not against 
uh, grass fed or pasture raised or oh. organic. Oh. It's just that it's it, it, it's it's just that you believe that you could do the diet perfectly fine without it. That's right. Yeah, in our teaching and in my clinical practice for years, there was no emphasis on that. Uh, I think it's important for moving forward to to help change the food environment, but it's not necessary right now at the moment to help the person who's in front of me who's trying to fix their diabetes, for example. Well, thank you so much, Eric. That's all we have time for today. Um, next week, we've got another exciting episode for you. But before you leave, just a reminder that we have the special bonus for you today, which is the 10 tips for starting keto the right way brought to you by Dr. Westman. You do not want to miss out on this guide. If you'd like to learn more about our live events, we've got some new events coming up in February. Uh, I believe it's uh, Raleigh, Atlanta, and West Virginia. We'd love to see you guys there. We'll obviously be talking a little bit more about this closer to the time. Um, but if you'd like to learn more about that, you can visit us at adaptyourlifeacademy.com. Eric, as always, thank you so much for your time. We look forward to catching up with you again next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take, take care.